Hello and welcome to this B1 Usability Package e-learning session. My name is Rasmus Fugt Jensen and today's topic is Universal Function Advanced. We will be looking into the macro feature. So here I am in Business 1 and I have opened up a Universal Function configuration and I choose the type macro. And what you see is just one big field because macro is a kind of programming language where you put in uh, different commands that will be executed in the order they are in. So if I had a command here, the first line, it would be that command, second command, third command and so on and until that is finished and that is the entire macro. So before we go into what different commands we have, let's see a little about the structure of command by itself and the entire syntax here. So I will just, without explaining uh, so much right now, tell us that we have a set command. So the first is the keyword set, but we will have other commands like activate, transfer, and so on. Next thing is we need a start parenthesis, and here we will then set zero to uh, many different arguments we put along into this this command. So in case of set it has two commands. The first one is the target, which would be something else, but let me just type in target as here's where we put in the target. And then we will have what is being set into the target, what, what value should be set in. So in order to separate different arguments, we put in pipes, then it would be value to set. Then we have the end parenthesis, and we have a semicolon ending the line. So if I had one set command, then I could put in another set command, or put in a target, a new value to set and a semicolon at last. If I had a command like activate, it could take along a single command. That would in this case be a menu UID. Again, we'll come back to all of these. So it asks, asks for one argument, so we don't have any pipes, while we can also call the activate without any parenthesis, giving it a diff different meaning. So it will always be a keyword, parenthesis, zero or more arguments, divided by pipes, semicolon at the end, and next line to the next command. In order to make it more simple to work with, we also can put in comments. So if we, at, at the end of each line, we can simply put in two dashes and then the command. For example, what this line does. So we would say it sets the value of the target or something like that. So these are the basic steps of what we do, and we can have one, two, in theory, endless com uh, commands, uh, one after each other. So what different commands can be used? Well, we won't go into every single one of them today, because at the time of this, we have X number of commands, but commands come to the, the system all the time, so instead of just teaching you the commands we have now and not learning about the rest, I will try to tell you how to read the manual, the documentation, on how to understand what each command does. So in order to do that, we can press F1 or go to documentation, contact help, and see the help file. And what we have is that the ma macro, it will tell a quick summary of what the macro does, give a sample here, 
and it will tell you that you put in a command and then some arguments, the semicolon, just as I mentioned before. And then comes each of the different uh, commands that we will go to now. So the way the help file works is it shows the command and then it shows how the command is structured. So in this case we have an activate and every time we have these uh, in tags like menu UID that means that is where you need to put something in. So for activate you can put something in here for pain level you can put something in. Click you can see you should you should put in three things an item a column and a type and it will say that dot row is optional. You will uh, if you have a look at how the dot row works in one of the tip of the week sessions uh, you'll get much more information about dot row. And it goes on and on like this. The different commands we have, some of them needing multiple arguments, some of them only needing one or two. And some of them not even uh, an argument. So let's go back up here and see that's an activate. It will tell us what it can do. So it, uh, the description is an activate is a it can activate a menu UID, so it can open up a new window or do a specific uh, task on the current window. Switch to switch mode, for example. So it will also tell you that you don't need to pass along a menu UID because it can work as if it's on a new window. The pain level same way, it will tell you what the current pain level is to change, and so on. Uh, you might need some, some knowledge of what the rest of the system does, of course. You need to know what a pain level is, you need to know what a menu UID is, you need to know to an item UID. So if you don't know this already, I recommend that you will go back to that documentation on what these things mean. Because they are used throughout the commands. So let's take a quick summary of some of the commands. The activate command is like opening windows and telling system, the system that it's on a window. The pain level is a way to tell which pane or which tab page we are on. The click is clicking items. It could be buttons, it could be uh, fields that you, need, uh, that you want to get uh, into focus and so on. Double click is the same tell what to double click. Focus and click are the same, but uh, if you want to focus on the business partner form, you can see there's always a sample over here on how it should be set up. Transfer is uh, a way to transfer things between two windows. So if you have one window, you use an activate to open another. Then you can transfer data from the parent window to the newly opened window. Again, I will show some, some samples later on. Transfer back is the same as transfer, but you take it from the child window and put it back into the parent window. For transfers, there's also one additional thing. There's a store system. So you can see that if you, you can see I'm transferring data here from item five to item four. Uh, from item 5 to item 31.0.1.0 for example uh, but I can also transfer data into a store so you can see store 1 is a special keyword and later on I can actually transfer from store back to another window so I can do that with if there's more than one window between the, the, the source and the targets 